Alright guys, it is, uh, it's that time again. You know, patch notes are out. And, you know, let's go over them. I've already read these, so, you know, I, I read these right time they came out, so I this not will be my first time reading them. I just want to, you know, do a video to go over them, give you my thoughts on them as per usual. Some of the changes they make uh, are really cool. Some of them are definitely not good. However, it is what it is. But yeah, server's about to go down in a minute, uh, so the patch will be up in two hours. The patch will probably be up around an hour after I upload this video, so, you know, you have time. Okay, so, uh, fix it. We don't care about the issues. These are whatever. Uh, like, I mean, this, I think this only really matters. Uh... Because sometimes spells just won't cast, but all these other ones or whatever. Then, okay, Bard's Allegro duration has been normalized to eight seconds based on the bar uh, based on the Bard's default persuasion of twenty. See, there's a couple spells they do this to. There's I don't I don't exactly know what this means by normalized to eight seconds. Uh, because the, the spells were already supposed to be eight seconds. I so unless like okay, so un unless they're saying so the spells don't have a flat timer anymore for how long they last however if you're at 20 persuasion then it's eight seconds because before the spells all had a certain amount of time they lasted um like you see like this right here like they, they had like a certain amount of time they lasted based on how you played them and that was just by default it wasn't related to your stats and your stats could increase them however like you know they i don't i i don't know i i don't this this is weird i don't i don't know like i did mean obviously they don't really explain exactly what this means so i'm not entirely sure However, we'll just like we'll just assume that you know they have, now they now have a base number for what they are based on what your stats are. So your stats could always increase them. So yeah, uh, Bard's Accelerant has been changed to be affected by persuasion and has also been normalized to eight seconds based on the Bard's default persuasion of twenty. Bard's area of alacrity, which action speed reduced from eight fourteen twenty to four six eight. This is the Bard's self buff where they gave themselves action speed. This is a really, really this is a big number. However, uh, it was also increased, so they have a much they have it for a much much longer time. So you have a less value for a longer time, which isn't as good, really. It's uh, much better to have a short value for or a big value for a short time, because uh, short engagement fights. So this is only really good for out of combat mostly. I mean, obviously it still helps in combat, but the long duration only really matters for out of combat. Uh, Bard's Ballad of Courage duration adjusted to thirty sixty one twenty based on the Bard's default persuasion of twenty. Alacrity, same thing. Uh, the additional move speed from Alacrity, once again, this is their self move speed, 5, 10, 15, 5, 7, 9. Uh, you know, see, the problem here is what this is doing is it's making it so the Bard almost never has to play songs. That pretty much what it's going to be like, once again, like, you know, they did, they did this. You're literally just going to play like six songs once every two minutes, and then for the next two minutes, you're just going to be like a, a rogue, basically. Uh, harm uh, harmonic shielding co uh, cost increased, Unchained Harmony cost increased from 3 to 5. This means they have to use more knowledge to use all their spells. Or else the other song, which is already an issue. Uh, this also makes it so they have, to, they have to go more to knowledge. They can't go as much into agility or strength. Uh, the gold coin container rarity grade has been adjusted to unique grade. I don't know what this does. I don't think it might just be like you know, just like an SFX thing. I don't, I don't really think this does anything. Nice of a UI. I'm sorry. I don't really think this does anything other than in terms of like how it drops or anything. You know, whatever it is what it is. Long rows projectile speed has been changed, reduced from three uh, thirty five hundred to thirty two fifty. The hit slow moves to penalty from thirty five percent to thirty percent, and the hit slow duration from one point five seconds to one second. Great change. Uh, before, basically, by the time if they shot you, they could hit you again before the slow is over for the most part. Amazing change. Uh, Rangers definitely needed a bit of a nerf. They were a little bit too strong. Uh, recurve bow, same thing, except they just lowered the moves to penalty because I don't think it has the hit slow like this. The long bow, I think it's only long bow does. Higher grade pickaxes give more interaction speed. That's cool. Is what it is. You know, nothing really changes much. I mean, cool. You can mine faster with a higher rate of pickaxe. Uh, drums projectile speed change from 1300 to 1000. This is great. Drums are way too damn fast. This is effectively close to like a 30% speed nerf. Somewhere around there. Actually, wait, is it a bit more? 300, 1300? Nah, 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 it's not. Is it? Nah, nah, it's not. It's not. Oh, maybe it is. Eh, I don't know. I'm not doing math. But anyways, it's a big nerf. They're slower, and the trajectory of the drum and the throwing has been slightly modified. I assume what this means is the drum will now have an arc when it is thrown instead of a fucking straight line piss missile. Before, the motherfuckers were laser beams. Now, maybe it actually has an arc, like, you know, a throwable or an arrow or something. Uh, damage from Dark Swarm no longer reduces recoverable health. This is nice because you can bandage up from Dark Swarm easier. You don't have to worry drink health pots. Uh, slightly lowered the drop rate for trinkets and treasures from chests. Very slightly lowered the drop rates for armor and weapons from the high-grade chests. For testing purposes, you can only... See, this is... Okay, okay, first of all, let me go over this before I get to the last thing. So what this does, basically, is means the really big chests and stuff, mainly they're just going to give you valuables. 
you're not really going to be pulling high rarity weapons out of those chests that much anymore. I don't know why they're doing this. Because then, like, where are you going to be... I mean, I guess overall it lowers the amount of really good stuff in the economy. But it's like, where are you going to be getting it from if they're not really dropping from, you know, chest and stuff as much? Because, like, that's where you get, like, your main, like, really good stuff. It's from, like, chest and everything. I guess maybe crafting, but, you know, as it is. Okay, on to the, on to the big thing. For testing purposes, you can now only enter normal dungeons with rare grade items or lower. Higher grade items found in the dungeons can be used during that session. This is the biggest change this patch. Obviously, I mean, I mean, obviously leaderboards. But this right here is huge. So now what this means is you can only go into normal dungeons with blue gear or lower. Can't go in with purples, can't go with legendaries, can't anything like that. If you find like a purple in the run, you can equip it. However, you can't take it in. So this is something a lot of people are asking for for a very long time because obviously you had the issue of people in like full purple gear were going in and pub stomping uh, low rollers or, you know, like they were doing whatever. So this is really, really good for them. They don't have to suffer anymore for super geared teams. However, obviously this doesn't solve the issue because you can be like in full blues with really good rolls and you're more kitted than people in purple and legendary gear. Like it's not hard to do. But, you know, overall, this is definitely a step in the right direction to uh, make norms more friendly to either new players or lower geared players, which is how it should be. These people in really good gear should be going into high rollers anyways. But yeah, great change. Uh, happy to see where this, uh, happy to see this change, and I hope it, uh, hope it gets better. I hope it just gets a lot better. Okay, now for the change that I care about, because I don't really give a shit about most of this stuff up here, regarding what I just said a moment ago. This is the big thing. New leaderboard system implemented for testing. Players now need to play 20 games in a high roller dungeon to be listed on the leaderboard for that specific dungeon. Leaderboards now show an average score for each category that is based on the number of times you entered that specific HR dungeon. One failed match session will be added to the average score for anyone ranked in the top 100 at the end of each day. So top ranked players cannot simply sit on their rankings. Okay, so what this means, I'm pretty sure because it doesn't specifically say it. So what this means is when you play 20 games, it will take an average of what you do from those 20 games, whether that be uh, escaping, uh, kills, uh, gold collected, veteran adventure, all of those. So for those 20 games, let's say if over those 20 games, let's say I got uh, 100 kills with fucking, uh, what, two kills a game? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not doing math. I can't. Let's say I get 20 kills in 20 games. And I get uh, like you know 20 kills in those 20 games. I would have so it showed my kills on the leaderboard as one kill, right? It was like one kill per game. That would be my average score, assuming they do it just based on real average. That would be my average score, right? And obviously, you know the people that are pulling out 100, 200 kills in 20 games, they're gonna be much, much higher. So now it doesn't reward you for just playing a lot. Yeah, you still have to play because if you don't play each day, they're gonna add one failed match session. What that means. I'm assuming, once again, because they haven't given me this, I have no information other than what I'm reading right here on the screen, so we can all make our own assumptions. What that means is a failed match session will pretty much be like you load it in and immediately quit the game. You will, you have, you won't have, it'll count you as not having escaped, and you'll get zero kills, zero adventure points, zero uh, treasure collected, all that. So every day you don't play it adds a really big zero to that category, right? And obviously, you know, a zero will bring you down a, like, a ton. So this is really good because, for example, you can play one game a day for 20 days right oh wait oh no okay, wait hold on i just read it so it's only top 100 people that do that okay so that's cool yeah yeah okay oh no no okay so after okay so you have to play at least so i guess you have to play at least two so every day you're in the top 100 no matter what it adds a failed match session so you have to play at least one see see this is so okay see actually this is this is a thing see this is weird though because it's based on how they do it. So it says one failed match session will be added to the average score for anyone ranked in the top 100 at the end of the day. So don't break players cannot simply send on the rankings. Okay, so the problem is, let's say, like, you know, okay, let's say they have 20 games, right? And each time you play a new game, it removes an old one from that list. If they add in an empty game at the start of the list, that's kind of an issue, though. Because then it really skews your points. It's, I mean, technically, everybody's points will be skewed, right? Because everybody will have that one game in there. However, the people that are going to be rank 1 are going to be the fastest people to play 20 more games to remove that. So honestly, in a way, this... In a way, unless the other 19 games you play are so incredibly, like, good, or if the... Excuse me. Or if the failed match session is added at the end 
you know, which would be weird, though. Why would they add it at the end? But that would be the best way to do it. You add it at the end, so you have to play one game, and then it removes it. I don't know. I'm actually, I actually, when I first read it, I didn't think of it this way. That's actually really, that could be really bad overall. Because if they're adding this one failed match session to the beginning of your, uh, the beginning of your, like, set of games, so, like, if you play 20 games, they added it as the most recent game, that's going to skew your points really, really hard for all your other games. Like, obviously, your other, like, 19 will make up for it for the most part. However, they're not going to completely make up for it, right? So, yeah, this, this could actually be pretty bad. This, this could actually be... I don't know. I, I need to see how this is done, but this could actually be really, really bad uh, based on how it's done. Uh, and yeah, they increased adventure points that you get from uh, pretty much everything, except uh, you get less points for killing players, which is good. You got way too many. Uh, you get more for killing mobs, uh, and you get more for looting uh, high-grade chests. And then with the completion of the patch, a new leaderboard season begins, which means right after the patch is uh, done, leaderboard starts awesome. So now, then I, now as always, I'm going to read the developer comments, and this is where I'm going to get into my issues. Because they, they always piss me off down here. Always. So this is good. Uh, we do think there's too much treasure being given by the chests. This is good. This is this is correct. Ab this is absolutely correct, right? Excessive gold in the economy without enough money sinks built in. 100% right. We have reduced the drop rate of treasure and treasure chingons in the chest to slightly uh, lower the gold supply. That's good. Good change. This is needed. However, this is where I get to my issue. Well, actually, no, not quite. They said, we've decided to push out a temporary leaderboard system. So this is temporary. But we believe is less grindy than previous versions, which it could be if it's done properly. And this is – okay, this is actually – I'm excited. We want to collect this data to help us build the real ranked system we have planned for the next big patch. So they are planning an actual ranked system for the game, which is really, really cool. And then our data in preparation for – so this is – there, here it is. Here comes the issue. Our data in preparation for the new leaderboards when using pr current proxy data – also showed that bars were overrepresented and we have implemented some balance changes we will feel to bring them in line. Okay. So the issue here is by overrepresented, do they just mean that people played them a lot? Because if they're nerfing a class because there's a lot of people playing it, that's just wrong. That's not a good thing to do. Because that could just mean it's the most fun that people have. Because I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Bard's the most fun class I like. I, so the class I have the most fun on. Because Bard is really unique gameplay. You know, you play a lot of songs. You, like, uh, can fight. You know, you do a lot of things. Very fun class. And if they're nerfing it just based on the amount of people playing it. Because let's keep in mind, Bard has been nerfed every single patch since it came out, I'm pretty sure. Every single one. You know what we didn't get? We didn't get a wizard nerf. We didn't get a cleric nerf. You know, like, where are those at? Those are literally two of, if not the two best characters in the entire game. Cleric is definitely the best character in the game. And we haven't got nerfed for those. Hell, Cleric got buffed at the start of this wipe because they buffed uh, they buffed the range on Holy Strike. So why haven't we got Cleric nerfs? Is it because there aren't that many people playing Cleric and Wizard? Because that is a flawed way of judging based on what you want to nerf or buff. Clerics and Wizards both need nerfs. Very, very hard. Like, Clerics, you absolutely have to have a Cleric on your team at this point. Bards got nerfed so hard... That, like, Bard can no longer solo support. That's not even good anymore. It's definitely really bad now. Bard is no longer a solo support. At this point, Bard's barely even going to be a secondary support. Wizard's a better support than Bard is. So why are we still nerfing Bard over and over and over? Why are we not nerfing Cleric? Why are we not nerfing Wizard? Why aren't we nerfing Weapon Damage? All these things that need to be nerfed. But we're nerfing Bard again for, like, the 10th time. But anyways, like, that's just, you know, I, that's, that's going to be a different video on how bad they are nerfing things. Finally, we're experimenting with the first gear-based matchmaking pool and have temporarily imp implemented a gear cap to the normal dungeons. This is great. Uh, you know, definitely has issues. Like they say right here, we're the solution has its flaws. We are interested in collecting this data. I think this is good. I think this is really good. The data I'm assuming they want to collect is probably to see how many more people go high rollers uh, compared to norms, you know, or see like the average level of gear, for example. Because, you know, there are some people that are only going in norms with a really good gear and they're trying to push those people into high rollers, which is great. Needs to happen. Hopefully does happen. But, you know might not anyways overall uh patch is whatever bard definitely did not need all these nerfs like we literally have almost like from here to here is bard changes man like why like just why uh the ranger nerf is good however that's all the balance we got like this literally did like none of this fixes the issues in the game currently i mean the ranger nerf is like good rangers are still good rangers are still good though the bard nerf doesn't change anything Buff ball still OP. Earthquake still OP. The game's still really, really unfun to play at a high level because every single every single fight just comes down to like two clerics holding earthquakes on doors or a buff ball running in and insta wiping a team. So overall, I mean, it's not the worst patch. Just but it just feels like every other patch. 
Some of the changes are great. However, it leaves me wanting more. It leaves me wanting much, much more. Uh, I'm excited for the leaderboard system. Like I said, uh, I am worried about this right here, though. I'm very worried about this and how it's actually going to work out. However, this only matters for the top 100 people. If you're not top 100, it doesn't really matter for you. This is definitely better for most people, the people that don't get to play as much, still have a chance to push leaderboards. So, you know, I'm excited for it. And as always, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, uh, you know, me giving my thoughts on the passion and everything. If you have anything that you would like to uh, you know, mention, feel free to comment it down below. And if not, then uh, I will catch you guys next time. Peace.